may recognize our next guest from his time taking down bad guys as Hercules. Love it. Now actor Kevin Sorbo is fighting government overreach during the pandemic, tweeting in part, wake up people. If you think this is all about your health, you're mistaken. Please open your eyes. Stop being led like blind sheep. Kevin joins us now with his wife, actors and radio host, Sam Sorbo. Thank you both for joining the program this morning. Always love having you. Uh, Kevin, if you would uh, share the essence of that tweet. What are you talking about? Well, I got to be honest with you. I did not write that tweet, okay? It was given to me from a friend. I loved it because I've said all those things before, and so I just reposted it. It's all I did. But the reality is, uh, you know, to start, I'm not saying that this disease is, this virus isn't dangerous. Of course it's dangerous. We're seeing mm -hmm. the numbers. We've seen people get sick. But, you know, look at the common flu. The common, the so-called common flu is 60 to 80,000 people a year die every year from the flu. Are we doing anything about that? Are we social distancing with that, even though we have flu shots? So to me, it's like there's more going on here, guys, and it's about control and power over our lives, and that's what government wants to do. So what do the two of you propose? What do you think should be happening then right now for the millions of Americans who are sitting at home, they're out of jobs, and they want to get back to work and at least even get outside? Well, I, th I think that there's uh, maybe a little bit of a call for some dis civil disobedience. I've seen uh, I've seen small businesses opening, defying uh, the state orders, and saying, "Look, we will practice as much social distancing as we can. We will implement safety policy procedures and policies, but we need business because let guess what's essential, folks? Food is essential, and feeding your family is essential." And the fact is we established this nation for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of happiness or prosperity is actually having a job. And so for the government to come in and say, no, your job is not essential, well, let's send a message to Washington. Maybe your job is not essential. Maybe you shouldn't be getting paid because there are people who are suffering today who are not even getting their minimum wage pay because the government has determined that their job is not essential. And, and I think that's an outrage, frankly. You know, it's amazing. You can have a Walmart open, you can have Target's open, but you can't have small businesses open. Yeah. You close down golf yeah. courses for a kind of golf courses. I mean, Jason, come on, you and I play in that Thompson tournament every year. It's insane. Golf is how he social distances from people. <laughs> I mean, and, and just and by the way, people like go to the grocery store and walk around, be five feet from people. Right. Yeah. Un understood. Just to point out, though, well, I mean, it, all the medical doctors it, and experts do say this is different and a lot more contagious than the flu, and that we do need to take certain medical and safety precautions so we just want to clarify that right yes. to clarify but there are also medical professionals who are saying guys we should not be social distancing there are medical people who have done studies in fact Erickson who has now been censored off of YouTube for somehow violating their standards of, uh, of operation whatever um, and he's he's now saying that he's being targeted because his message is we need we need herd immunity we need people to get out and to practice so, you know wash your hands sure but but maybe this was an overreaction. The CDC just lowered the death rate of COVID to 37,000. And I think part of this is you you want you want trust in people. You you think you know guidelines are good. Overwhelming government mandates sweep people up that otherwise should be able to make a choice for themselves and be responsible. I mean that's what free citizens do. Sure, exactly. Have you seen that um, I'm not wearing a mask, my body, my choice meme that's going around now? <laughs> well, Is I mean, my body, my choice still applicable? <laughs> but I mean, in, in fairness too, though, I mean, you do hear Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks and, and, and majority of medical doctors in this country saying that the social distancing thing is what has helped bring our numbers down to the point where we are right now, where the curve is, you know, flat in a lot of different states. And that's why some states are able to ease restrictions at this point. So, yes, absolutely. So what happens when we go back to work? What happens when we go back to school. What happened? I mean, there's a great meme out there, and there's a great thing from Craig University where Dennis Prager says, until it's safe. What does that mean? Well, it means never then, because there's always going to be viruses out there. This, is this virus going to go away and be gone forever? We, we concern, eventually have to go back to living lives. My concern is that the predictions of Fauci and Burks ha have not been borne out in any, in any degree. And so the CDC so, revised their well, death tolls to 37,000, which is not even on a, uh, on a rate of the flu at this point. So then what? Well, I mean, it's, I'm Sam, not Sam denying and, the fact that Go ahead, Jason, Jason. Let, let me just say, uh, it is good to see you again. I once saw Kevin riding his bicycle, carrying his golf clubs and I thought, you know, who carries their golf clubs while they ride their bicycles? So it is good to see you again. 
Um, and I know faith, we didn't get a chance to talk about it, plays a big part uh, in your life. Uh, and this being Sunday, I think it's also a good message. I also want to plug your book because you've got this book out there, True Faith, Embracing Adversity to Live in God's Light. It's available now. I encourage people to think about getting there. There it is. There's the book, a beautiful picture of you both. It's good to see you. Thank you again for joining us here today. Kevin and Sam, thank, thank you very much. And once again, for our viewers, um, difficult to compare coronavirus to the regular flu. So just a reminder about that. In the meantime, the U.S. economy could bounce back by late summer. That's a